Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. Today was Vigor's anniversary, so the devs hosted an anniversary stream. Today's video will cover the information covered in that anniversary stream and all around what happened during the stream. So without any further delay, let's just get right into this. So the beginning of the stream was a review of previous updates that happened throughout this year. The devs twitched through these updates with Pyrite, Muff, Johanni, and Arshi giving commentary on each of these updates, and what really happened in them, and really more some behind the scenes info. As part of the stream occupied the first hour and 10 minutes of the stream, and it was an interesting experience for any player who wanted a long detailed explanation of all Vigor's accomplishments in the last year. However, if you're a player who's been keeping up with the game, or you're a player who keeps up with these videos, it wasn't exactly any new info, it was just kind of a review of what we already know. Next up on the stream, they went on a tour of the offices, where they walked around and interviewed different devs. They started off with Tony from marketing, they asked him what map was his favorite, and which he could live on if he could choose one, and he chose Felcanton due to the Vikings. Um, next was Peter, who was working on a piece of art used to promote the stream, then was a QA tester who was working on testing connectivity on the Switch, likely hinting that an optimization may be coming in the future in that regard. Um, following that was marketing, so starting off with Sevi, who is working on some cosmetics, likely the new anniversary ones that were released today. Next up was Philip, who stated that they were working on some new features as well as some tweaks to the tutorial. They were followed by Lars, who was working on some general game mechanics. Next up was Mikhail, who worked on the UI and higher level scripting. The tour then went over to Seventia, a produ producer who works on communication with outside game companies and really works on a lot of the planning within the game. In the stream, he was seen with the Vigor official Reddit open, seemingly reading posts that the community had submitted. Next, we have Parit, who was once her community manager, but has now shifted over to being a producer. She talked about the change in her position and really her new role. From there, we had Tom, who is an audio designer from Bohemia. And that was really everyone that we got to see during the tour. It was a bit entertaining to briefly hear something from most of the devs in the team, as they all talked about the various projects that they're working on. Following this tour, a second group of devs gathered. This group was Forsythia, Philip Statsny, Johan Priestek, and Alex, also known as Sweet Tsunami. This is like an A team, like the A team of dev streams. If you're someone who follows dev streams, when one of these four people show up in a dev stream, you really know it's going to be one of those dev streams that has lots of information. So for me, it was really nice to see them all sitting at once, sitting or together, relaxing, not really having to give us new information, but really just being able to relax a little bit rather than the uh, large amount of information that they usually pull off in each dev stream. So to start off, Johan Priestek did what he is pre very famous for, and he showed us some great data. Uh, Priestek's charts in the past have been very useful for those of us who are interested in data. Um, and today, the data that Priestek revealed was some data regarding the heat maps of Ewim encounters. This isn't really useful for us to learn anything new about the game, so I'm not going to really cover them in this video. But it was fun data that was entertaining to watch. So if you're someone who just really likes data like I do, go sit down, watch the Priestek part of the video. It was fun. Following this data reveal, we got a meme highlight reel, where the devs pulled up memes and then each dev gave it a rating. This game was quite fun to vibe with, especially considering the cast of devs that were rating these memes. We know these guys as being some of the most, you know, public faces of information for us. So it was nice to see them give their opinion on some of the memes. Um, then we got some data from Alex that was kind of interesting. He confirmed that the top three most used guns in the game are the AKM, then the Bugle, and then the M249. This goes against a lot of data that VSO had gathered, which honestly does make a little bit of sense. Um, so VSO's data on Xbox had seemed to suggest that the M249 was at the very top. However, we need to consider Alex has no real good reason to lie about this data because he's okay with the M249 becoming the most used. He's said this before. So it's not like we have reason to be like, hey, no, Alex is lying about the top three guns. You know, he's just trying to hide the 249. He doesn't care, so he's not lying. And in his data, there's more generalization of data. Our data, VSL's data, cannot include new browns. It cannot include Switch players. It can't really include, you know, PlayStation players. Yes, Switch players play on Xbox, but only if, you know, that's good for uh, matchmaking. 
And this also doesn't include other regions. VSL's data is focused to the east coast of America. So while VSL's data may tell us from frequency that if you are an east coast American, which is where a lot of Vigor players come from, you most likely will see the M249 as the most used weapon. But if you're on PlayStation in a country like Serbia, you might not have the same experience and the Butyl might be more common because that's just so far from our data range. And I think that's really what Alex's data is telling us, that there are regions where other guns are just more popular uh, than the 249 and that we really should believe both data. I think there is something to be said by each in which they offer and how they provide their information. But this does create a new interesting question of how in the hell is the bugle still above the 249? Guys, if you're still a bugle main, I have a lot of questions for you. But jokes aside, time for some final statements to conclude this video. One, there is a new mode that is out with the anniversary called Tomato Fight Mode. This mode is fucking amazing. I've been genuinely enjoying it, playing lots of it since it came out, and I highly suggest you jump on and try it out yourself. That all aside, I had an entertaining time with the stream, and, uh, Happy anniversary, Vago. It's been a nice year. I'm curious to see where we'll go in the next year. And I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.